My name is Matt Lauber with OPW and today I'm going to be talking to you about E25 or E15 and B20 hanging hardware requirements. Um, a lot of you may be familiar with it, but others may not. Um, PEI actually a few years ago published a document that stated a manufacturer can just write a letter of compatibility, but if you actually read what that PEI's recommendations were, it was referring to UST equipment, and obviously hanging hardware is not UST equipment. Therefore, really doesn't apply, and a letter of compatibility from the manufacturer doesn't get you where you need to be uh, with the local laws and jurisdictions. So, that being said, why do you need E25 or B20 hanging hardware? And I'll explain the E25 and E15 thing a little bit later. NFPA 30A as well as OSHA, both require a nozzle to be marked, listed, and labeled per the UL 2586 requirements. That's in NFPA 30A section 6.3.2. UL 2586, which is the UL test standard for nozzles, it only covers ethanol alcohol concentrations up to E10 or 10% ethanol. And anything above that, they're gonna say, refer to UL 2586A. Now, that's where things get a little funny because the actual logo on the product is not changing. It's the listing that that product is listed to that is changing, okay? So there's no way for you to look at that product and determine if that UL listing is for E10 or for E25 or for E85 for that matter, okay? It's kind of the same thing with uh, it, using kind of a general terms, but uh, you know, the blender in your kitchen, right? It has a UL listing. Guess what? It's a different UL listing than what a nozzle gets approved to, right? But yet the UL logo still looks the same, okay? You kind of assume though with blenders and nozzles that obviously they were tested to different standards. Because nozzles look the same, they really weren't, you know, it's, it's a little bit difficult that way. So. Um, same thing kind of goes through with uh, swivels and breakaways as well though. They weren't tested to UL 2586, A or B, or just UL 2586. They have their own UL standard, UL 567, okay? And they actually have UL 567 A, which is for ethanol concentrations above E25, um, and UL 567 B for biodiesel concentrations above B10. What's the differences between these products? Well, kind of like I alluded to earlier, really it might be impossible for you to physically look at the product and be able to determine uh, any differences. So the common person's gonna go, there's no difference between this one and this one, but there is, okay? You can't necessarily tell what the, you know, the raw materials were that use that product, okay? So for example, uh, for biodiesel concentrations, right? You can't use nylon. Nylon 6 is not allowed to be used in those nozzles, okay? Or in the swivels or in the breakaways. But yet nylon 6 is a very common material in regular nozzles, okay? Throughout the industry. So things change a little bit and you might not be able to always detect those changes though. So kind of talked about UN or NFPA 30A as well as OSHA's requirements, right? And they're going to say the nozzle needs to be, or hanging hardware, needs to be marked and listed per the fuel in which it's supposed to be used for, which it's rated, okay? So UL 2586, again, is only for nozzles up to E10 or B5. And then you have UL 2586A and UL 2586B, A for ethanol and UL B for biodiesel. The way I uh, remember that is obviously UL 2586B, B for biodiesel. Uh, as you can kind of see on the screen, this is kind of pulled from NFPA's 30A's document, and it says six, section 6.3.2, dispensing devices for class one and class two liquids shall be listed. That's kind of vague, shall be listed, right? So technically this is where people get a little confused and a little uh, take things for granted, I guess, and go, well, it's listed for E10, but I'm gonna use it for E25. Well. It's not really listed for E25 though, right? So NFPA 30A hasn't really caught up to that, you know, standard or that different shit. If you actually go into then what UL states, and this is pulled from that, 
What UL states is that, and this is UL 2586, but what it states is that, you can see here, it's going to refer to UL 87A for additional requirements for gasoline and gasoline blends of nominal concentrations up to 85%. That's a standard listing, right? And actually, if you go over into the glossary, though, on UL 2586, it's going to tell you that the flammable combustible fluids that are uh, tested for in this, the first bullet point, or excuse me, second bullet point here, gasoline ethanol blends at levels designated as gas hall E10 or less formulated according with ASTM standards. And then it goes into the diesel fuels as well. Going into this a little bit further, UL87A then refers to, you can see on bullet point 13.2.1, it'll say a hose nozzle valve shall be complied with UL2586A. And again, the same thing goes with UL87B, okay? So 87B, again, B for biodiesel. UL87B is gonna say refer to UL2586B, okay? UL2586A then, jumping through all these hoops, right? Um, UL2586A is gonna say, we understand that you're gonna maybe use this hanging hardware in E15, but we're gonna test it to E25, okay? So actually there is no E15 approval. 2586 stops at E10, and 2586A starts at E25. So there's no E15. They stated that basically it's backwards compatible though, right? So if you need E15, you're gonna go to E25. You're gonna sit there and go, why'd they do that? Well, actually when UL2586A was being written and drafted and whatnot, uh, is when this whole ethanol push and biodiesel push was going on. And they said, time out. You know, a while ago it wasn't ethanol, it was methanol and all this other stuff. Um, and then you went to E10, and now you're going to E15. You know, in, in three years' time, you're gonna be at E20 or E25. So we're just gonna plan ahead. So UL 25, UL 87A then references, you can see right there, th bullet point 13.2.1, it's gonna reference UL 2586A. UL 87B for biodiesel is going to then reference UL 2586B for biodiesel. This kind of goes through with the swivels and breakaways as well, UL 567. It's going to say UL 567A, UL 567B. So this A and B, this whole, this whole uh, sequence and hoops that we're jumping through is compatible with all the different UL standards for ethanol and biodiesel concentrations. Um, getting back to UL 2586A though, UL 2586A is going to be tested to 25% ethanol to 85% ethanol. And you're gonna sit there and kind of question like, well, I have E15 though. I'm like, you're right. You, you, that's what's going into the market right now. And the reason for this, right, was because UL2586 co covered nozzle or ethanol concentrations up to 10% ethanol. And then as this whole ethanol push was going on and UL2586A was being uh, adopted and written, they kind of went through and said, you know what, you, you didn't have ethanol at all, now you have 10%, now you're gonna know 15%. We're gonna plan ahead and we're just gonna make it 25%. That way, this, this, you know, we're, we're planning for the future here. We're gonna think you're gonna go there, right? There's gonna be a bigger push for ethanol so the, and biodiesel. So that's why they kind of planned ahead. So really, when you state that I need an E15 nozzle, you have to buy an E25 listed nozzle or hanging hardware um, to make it compatible then with E15 because your normal nozzle is only going to go to E10 and B5. Okay. So what's also new in UL 2586 though is the marking requirements. Okay. In order to clear things up for the consumer though, UL actually changed the marking requirements in UL 2586 and UL 2586A and B. Um, what they did is obviously we have to have the manufacturer's identification on it, what the product is and everything else. But manufacturers are also required to put on it the type of fuel for which the product was listed, okay? That's something that's new and hasn't been done before, okay? So that's how a consumer though can look at a product and go, is this approved for E15? Or is this approved for E25? What is this nozzle approved for? Again, this kind of separates then the standard nozzle from uh, the normal nozzle since there wouldn't be really a visual difference between the two. And again, on this screen right here, you can kind of see where these things are marked on OPW's products. 
Again, OSHA and NFPA both require that the nut nozzle be marked, listed, and labeled per UL 2586 requirements. That's kind of jumping through the hoops, right? So NFPA states that NFPA 30A states the nozzle must be listed and refers to UL 87A. UL 87A then refers to UL 2586A. And UL 2586A is what the actual product listing is. And it will be listed as the UL logo plus whatever ethanol concentration it was approved for. So we kind of went through this. And again, I keep bringing this slide up only because it, it shows the hoops that you have to jump through to get where, or where you need to go on this. NFPA 30A and OSHA both require a nozzle to be marked and listed. Again, I've repeated this several times. UL 2580, or U, they will refer to UL 87A and UL 87B. UL 87A and B will then refer to UL 2586A, UL 2586B, or UL 567A or UL 567B for your swivels and breakaways. A letter of compatibility per what PEI stated was only required for or approved for underground storage tank equipment. And the reason for that was because at the time and still to this date, there is no uh, ethanol, there is no E15 test for those products, right? So you also put that responsibility back on the manufacturer to state, yes, it's compatible and it will function as designed. They didn't do that though for above ground and a hanging hardware. Another thing to kind of bring up though is hoses. We've talked about nozzles, we've talked about swivels, we've talked about breakaways. When we talk about hoses, there are a few uh, hose manufacturers with like a B20 hose and everything else. But again, if you actually go onto their listing page, their UL listing page, it'll state for gasoline, ethanol, or biodiesel concentrations up to, right? It tells you on their UL listing page, but the product itself will not say uh, it's made for E25 or B20 or something like this, okay? There is the biggest thing though, I think for a, a knowledgeable consumer or, or distributor to know is there is right now only one manufacturer for E25 and E85 approved hoses. There are people that have stated that it's compatible, which is great except you really aren't meeting NFPA 30A's requirements when they state that it must be listed, right? The product may come with a UL listing on it, but it doesn't, it isn't UL listed for the fuel in which it's being used on. So the, the, right now the only manufacturer for E25 and E85 hose is Continental or Conitech. And the E25 hose is black with orange stripe and it states E25 right on it. And again, the E85 hose that everyone's familiar with is black with a yellow stripe that says for E85. So another reason why buying listed equipment is important, obviously. Um, one, fuel compatibility. Uh, soft metals and high ethanol concentrations actually dissolve, which you may not think is that horribly bad, but when you start killing catalytic converters and uh, other you know, computer controls and whatnot um, in vehicles, as well as uh, pumps and whatnot in your system, it's gonna end up costing you a lot of money in the long run, okay? The other thing is, is technically when your authority has having jurisdiction is coming in and doing their inspection, you really don't wanna have product that you purchased and then you're gonna have to repurchase all over again because now you're compliant. That's not gonna be something that you can go, well, I got this letter. Well, you have a letter, but that, really doesn't mean anything because that only applied for UST applications. So again, your authority having jurisdiction could come in there and actually shut your site down, um, not allowing you to dispense fuel until you replace all that hanging hardware equipment. UL 2586, if you actually go in and you're kind of questioning, hey, I don't know, because people's manufacturers, you know, they gain UL approvals, they lose UL approvals at the same time, products become obsolete. If you actually go on to UL's website, they have a UL, uh, you will list the database, okay? And you can type in the manufacturer's name and pull up their line card. And you can actually see the products that they have UL approved and actually find out what standard they were approved to, okay? So for example, right here on this page, you can see OPWs. And you can see all the nozzles that we have for UL 2586. And you can also drop down and you can see highlighted the nozzles for UL 2586A for ethanol concentrations above E25 and UL 2586B for biodiesel concentrations above B20. So this is what you need to kind of look for though, 
um, when, you're, when you're going through the line cards if you really want to know if you're buying a listed product. Again, a letter of compatibility from the manufacturer really doesn't uh, buy you anything, especially with the authority having jurisdiction. And in the long run, it could end up costing you. So I hope this cleared some things up for you on E25, B20 hanging hardware requirements and uh, eliminated some uh, confusion that you might have.